A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Monday, March 14. Prime Minister Mia Motley today delivered a mixed budget, offering some ease to consumers in the face of the rising cost of living, but introducing some new taxes to boost government's revenue. She described the 2022-2023 financial package as a responsible budget that takes into account the safety and welfare of Barbadians in the face of mighty global winds. Not only was it the government's first budget in two years, but MPs happily returned to the historic parliament buildings in the city, which had to undergo major repairs. This is the most beautiful building in Barbados. You know? And the third oldest parliament in the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth. A rich easier. tradition, you know. And we're looking forward to the exciting times. Is it going to be easier being, being here than it was in? in well, it's far easier. I mean, one, it, we, we have two chambers operating, mm -hmm. and it is, it's more spacious, easier to, to really follow you know, the COVID protocols. And it really feels like a problem. Okay. I was very impressed with the changes. We now have to see what the quality, the quality and how we like. But I think it's a valiant effort for the government to have been able to transform the institution. I heard institution. that it's really good to be back in Parliament where we were meant to be in the first place. As you know, I have been part of the, I want to say blame, because the public, some of them blame me for the shutting down of Parliament, but it was for the greater good. After we left, I discovered that many of the employees here were suffering from issues, health issues as a result of the environment. So I am happy that the government went ahead to fix the problem, at least most of it with the problems that we have with the mold and other issues and the air condition and so on. So it is good to be back. I am comfortable that we are back at home. It's been two years that we are away from here. And I know people like this fanfare. People like to know they can interact and mingle even though short with the MPs. So I think it is great that we are back here. How do I feel about the budget? I have mixed feelings. But I'm also confident that my Prime Minister, who is a caring person, loving person, and obviously think about poor people, that she will give her her best shot. Under the circumstances, we know there's a pandemic facing us. We also know there's a war looking at us. So we don't expect things to be the same. But I am confident, right, that she will really live. The fanfare aside, Prime Minister Mia Motley tackled repeated calls for an ease at the pumps. She announced that Barbadians will be paying less for gas and diesel from Wednesday midnight. We propose to cap the dollar amount of VAT payable on petrol to 47 cents per litre from the 61 cents. And we shall... And we shall do so effective midnight Wednesday, March 16th, initially for six months. I give the House the assurance that at the end of the six months, we may well have to look and see what further adjustments have to be made. But in this environment, we have to walk sure-footed. This means, Mr. Speaker, once adjusted from midnight tomorrow night, Wednesday, um, night, night after, Wednesday, March 16th, the government, therefore, will see the price or Barbadians will see the price of oil at the pump go from $4.13 to $3.99 immediately on Wednesday. Similarly, in the case of diesel, sir, we will cap the dollar amount of value-added tax payable to $0.37 cents per litre, effective midnight on same Wednesday, March 16th, initially for six months. This means that the current international prices should bring down the price of a litre of diesel from $3.46 to $3.32. Prime Minister Motley also announced measures to cushion the impact of the rising cost of living. Effective midnight tonight, the government of Barbados will partially shield consumers from the increased freight costs by capping the cost of freight used for the purpose of calculating customs duties at the pre-COVID-19 levels of 7,350 US dollars per 20 foot container and 8,000 US dollars for 40 foot containers. And we shall hold these costs for 12 months, Mr. Speaker. 
Barbadians were, however, told they must share the burden of rebuilding the economy. Motley announced a new pandemic levy that will enable some workers and businesses to contribute to the $1 billion bill for government's COVID-19 fight. We shall introduce a one-off pandemic contribution levy on corporate profits in certain sectors. Where a company with a net income above $5 million in 2020 and 2021 is carrying on domestic business in the telecommunications sector, in the retail sale of petroleum products by dealers, in the commercial banking sector, so deposit taken and finance houses are there, but we exclude credit unions, and in general and life insurance business, then these companies shall be subject to a pandemic contribution levy of 15% of their net income for the company's financial statements for the fiscal years ending March 2021 and 2022. Mr. Speaker, this levy for each fiscal year is payable in addition to the company's corporation tax obligation and it is not deductible for tax purposes. The pandemic contribution levy for the two fiscal years is payable to the Barbados Revenue Authority in eight monthly payments commencing July 15th of this year, 2022. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, the levy in respect to the fiscal year ended 2021 is due in the July to October 2022 period, and the levy in respect of the fiscal year ended 2022 is due in the period November 2022 to February 2023. This levy will only be in place for the period up until March 2023 and represents, as I said, a one-off contribution to the over one billion costs that it has cost us as a nation to fight COVID. In other news this Monday, even as legislators were meeting in the Lord Chamber, High Court Judge Cicely Chase, Queen's Counsel, today dismissed preliminary arguments of a constitutional motion filed by former Attorney General Adriel Brathwick QC, asking the court to quash a decision by President Dame Sandra Mason to reconvene Parliament on the grounds that only 18 out of 21 senators have been installed. Justice Chase deemed that Parliament with 18 senators is properly constituted and therefore the business of the Senate is to be conducted. Attorney General Dale Marshall says the ruling paves the way for senators to get on the country's business. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy immunity and performance the next generation of hydration cure oxygen nature's ultimate water Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news in Trinidad and Tobago, the Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs is seeking additional information about a potential freedom fighter, a Trinidadian national who intends to visit Ukraine and fight alongside its countrymen. United National Congress activist and business development consultant Brian Stone said the decision to fight for the Ukrainians came from his heart. At a conference on Monday, Line Minister Dr. Amory Brown admitted he found the report disturbing as the act could put the country and its national reputation in jeopardy. But what, all I can do is sound a note of caution for the good sense, the welfare and the physical well-being of all our nationals and encourage persons not to take bad example from those who might wish to be reckless, who might be, wish to be on some sort of uh, populist agenda. On the international front, Russian and Ukrainian officials are set to hold a new round of talks as Moscow's invading forces show no signs of easing their onslaught against Ukraine. More on this report from Al Jazeera Television. War comes suddenly, and it comes from the sky. A loud blast 
and everything that was once the comfort of home, now gone. For the elderly, limited in movement, many can't make it down to the underground shelter of this nine-story building. Rescue workers pick up parts of what used to be ordinary lives in Kyiv. It's hard to comprehend what is happening here. It is a city. He is just a jerk, a total jerk. I've got nothing else to say. You see, I've got no words to describe it. This war is now into its third week. Military analysts may be assessing that Russia's advance is slow, but it is deadly. Humanitarian corridors have been agreed upon for Monday, and more aid convoys are planned. We will again try to unblock the movement of the humanitarian convoy from Berdyansk to Mariupol. The port city of Mariupol remains under a devastating siege. Attempts to move civilians out has failed day after day. People may remember this heavily pregnant mother being rescued following a Russian strike on a maternity hospital last week. News now emerging that she and her baby have died. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.